Well, good evening, and thank you for joining us again for a time of prayer. We are privileged tonight to be in the home of Bob and Margaret Rattel, and they're going to be joining us in prayer in just a moment. But we've been going through the Beatitudes, and tonight we come to that wonderful Beatitude that says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, Psalm 24 says this, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. Now, these are things that would have been common knowledge to uh, the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, as they would grow and be taught. In fact, David was the one who penned these words. But when you look into the meaning of the words in the Hebrew, the, the word pure in this verse is the Hebrew word bar, which means uh, beloved or empty of malice. So we could interpret it, blessed are the uh, who has a pure heart, as a, an empty heart that doesn't have like secret uh, identities in there or secret compartments in there. And, and he's an open book. So it's not double-minded. And in the New Testament, the word pure in the Beatitude in Matthew, the Greek word is katharos, which means clear or clean. And so it's a, a very similar meaning to the Hebrew word that is there. And so what does it mean to have a pure heart? Well, it means one who has no hidden agendas, as we said, uh, no divided heart. When you look into the book of James, it says that a man who has a divided heart is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. He's wishy-washy. And that's not what this is talking about. Uh, a, a clear, pure heart is one that has one direction, and you know where that is. It's not secret doubts, but wholeheartedly is for God. And the pro promise that is contained here says that they will see God. Now that's a wonderful promise. And Jeremiah, the prophet, says, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And this falls in line with the greatest commandment that says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. But this verse has very specific and special meaning for my wife, Joan. And Joan, why don't you tell us of a couple of things uh, as to why this verse is special to you? Well, some years ago, I had the privilege of going to Israel. And one of our stops was where we assume that Jesus spoke the Sermon on the Mount. And one of our um, travelers there also read all the blessed and it was just like as if Jesus was speaking there. there. We were on a hilltop. Below, you could just see Galilee. And it just was so peaceful that you could radiate the voice to go way beyond. But the second part of that verse is more meaningful. It's just the fact that when I publicly professed my faith um, as a teenager, the pastor at that time gave me, Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. And so that's a verse that's been with you for all of your adult life. Yes. And it's been one of those key verses. If you would have a life motto, that would be it. And so, folks, there's wonderful promise in this, that if your heart is pure, and what can purify your heart? Well, the old hymn says, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that cleansing is still available today. Well, we want to begin our prayer time, and as we do every week, we want to include the Lord's Prayer. And so we'll pray together, and then Joan and I are going to pray for a couple of things, and, and Bob and Margaret are going to pray for a couple of things, and we're practicing again social distancing here in the house because we want to do things properly. And so let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And Father, tonight we thank you that we can come before you with our worship and our praise. Lord, Psalm 100 says we enter your gates with thanksgiving and we enter your courts with praise. So we thank you for who you are, for what you are, are, have done and what you are still doing. And Lord, you are great. You are the awesome God and we worship you. And Lord, tonight your word also tells us to pray for those who are in authority over us. So we wish to pray tonight for our federal leadership, for Prime Minister Trudeau. Lord, that you would give him wisdom, that you would guide his heart as we are navigating these waters in this country. We pray for our premier, Doug Ford. God, that you would guide his heart, that as legislation is enacted and passed down to us, that it would be for the good of the people. Lord, that it would draw people towards you. And we pray on the local level for our mayor, Walter Senzik, Lord, that as he is doing his best with the council for what is good for St. Catharines, that you would give him wisdom and strength. But Lord, we also pray for the leadership within our church, and not just our church, but all of the churches throughout our city. And we pray for the Board of Elders. Lord, whatever they might be called in the different churches, we just pray that you would give them a heart of a servant. Lord, that they would discuss the issues that are in front of them, and they would do what seems good to the Holy Spirit and to them. Lord, that they would let the Spirit of God guide them, we pray for the pastor and the staff in each of the churches. And Lord, in our church, we pray for Pastor Rob and Sarah, that you would be with them. And Lord, for the rest of our staff, for Phil as he's working with the young people, for Katie as she's administrating our office, for Paul and Emmanuel as they are doing our technical things within the church, which are so important right now. And again, for Paul Mason as he is doing our our custodial work and sanitation within the church. And Lord, I pray that you would also help me as I work with the seniors and other aspects of, of Bible study in that. Lord, we thank you for these opportunities and the avenues that are given to us. And Lord, we're doing things differently now than we've done before, but we pray that you would help us to do it under the power and the anointing of the Spirit of God so that it would not be us, but it would be you that is doing this. So we thank you, Lord, for all of these things. And honey, we have some folk that, that do need some prayer. Uh, we have some that are still recovering from surgery and some that, again, are still facing the loss of a loved one. Could you pray for, for these ones tonight? Mm -hmm. Father, we just want to lift up to you um, those recovering from surgery. I think of Natalie Brown, Lord, and I think of... Uh, Diana, uh, William's wife, Lord, and just continue to heal their bodies, Lord, that they may once again um, feel better than they have before, Lord, and complete healing there. We also think of Jake Bolt, Lord, and we just hold him up in prayer as he continues to heal. Lord, I also want to pray for uh, Sarah Clausen, Lord, as we've uh, said our goodbyes to John here, Lord, but the, the busyness of a funeral has passed and now it's, it's just time for, there's uh, quiet times and times of missing John and just the change of a daily routine, Lord, without a spouse. Even though we know he's uh, in heaven rejoicing with you, Lord, those here on earth with uh, our children and grandchildren are missing him, Father. We just ask that your arms of comfort be around Sarah, Lord, and just give her a sense of peace and comfort that can only come from you, Lord. We just pray this in your name, Father. Amen. Amen. One of the ministries that Scott Street has, it's called Lunch from Scott Street. Uh, we used to call it Lunch at Scott Street, but we, we can't meet there right now because of restrictions. And so we have a program called Lunch from Scott Street. And uh, uh, Bob and Marga are very integral parts of this. So I'm gonna 
move the camera over to them. And uh, Marka can tell us a little bit about that. And she has some things on her heart that she wants to pray for. And, and Bob as well, as he's part of our men's study and uh, also helps in the kitchen a lot. And they're also going to lead us in prayer. So as they lead us, we're asking you just to pray along with them as well. So Bob and Marga, it is so good to have you here in your own home. <laughs> it's so good to be here and have you join yes, us. Thank you for being joining us here this evening as well. And thank you to all of you that are participating in the Lunch from Scott Street. And uh, invitation to those of you who are not participating yet that you are more than welcome to join us as well and enjoy some of the soups that we are making for you. These are for you. This is our way of saying we miss you, we love you, and we just want to make sure that you are well and that you are taken care of. And we are having a great time preparing the soups in the kitchen. We are doing it on Wednesdays. And because of health restrictions and reasons, we have to freeze the soup before it can be delivered. So it's cooked on Wednesday, frozen, and then delivered or picked up on Thursdays at the church office. So please feel free to call the church office and order your soup. Uh, this month we are doing hamburger soup and that's just ground beef with tomatoes and beans and, and pasta. And the other one, the vegetarian one, is a uh, lentil. And both are very good tasting and nutritious. And yes, let's also go into prayer. And it's on my heart. There are people that are working out there on the front lines. And I just want to go into prayer for them. Father God, I do thank you for your mercies and your grace and the strength that you continue to grant on a daily basis, moment by moment, day by day. And thank you also for, for pure hearts, that you see our hearts, you see what's inside our hearts and what motivates us to do things. Sometimes our hearts are not so clean and our hands are not so clean, but you do know us and you continue to shower us with your mercies and your grace. And I thank you for that. And this evening I want to come and I want to pray, Father. I want to pray and I want to thank you for those people that are still working on the front lines, our nurses, our doctors, our responders um, and the technicians, the lab technicians that are doing the tests on the, on the COVID tests and Father, those that are working in the emergencies and in the ICUs taking care of people that are sick. Father, I thank you for them. And Father, I just pray that you would continue to strengthen and uphold them, continue to meet their needs, that they will get the rest that they need, that they will also be refreshed when they get rested and give wisdom and guidance to those that are, to the doctors, to the technicians, and those that are taking care of the sick people. Father, I also thank you for our fire departments and our police departments and our uh, paramedics that are involved out on the streets taking care of people as well. And just pray for your hedge of protection around them and give them much wisdom, grace, and strength as well. And Father, as we are coming to the end of our summer and the government is saying, yes, schools are opening in September. There's a lot of fear. There's doubt. There is um, not a lot of information yet. But Father, I just pray that you would be with those that are making the decisions about opening the schools, that you would guide and direct them, give them wisdom. And I pray for the teachers, for the staff, for the uh, custodians that will be working at these schools. Father, guide and direct them, meet their needs as well. But most of all, I pray for the students and the parents who are facing the, the decision of whether to go to school or whether to keep their children at home, Father. Just guide and direct them in that decision making. Give them wisdom and strength. And Yeah, Father, we know that your hand is in this and we give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory for the great and awesome and loving and kind Father that you are to all of us. I pray these things in your holy name. Amen. And Lord, we also want to uh, thank the, uh, the people that help out with this Scott Street uh, soup detail that we have. Uh, Bob McCoggan is a major force, and uh, Dennis comes in and he helps every week. And uh, with all the many volunteers that we have, and we have to space everyone just so we're following all the conditions that are set out for us. And uh, I am just glad that I can help out doing the dishes because you wouldn't want to eat the food that I prepare. 
uh, also with that ministry, there's also uh, the men's ministry at church. Now, I'm involved with the Thursday night Bible study, and you go on Zoom, and I'd never heard of Zoom before this. But uh, with that, it's a good thing that uh, men can get together, because men are usually loners. They like to do things on their own, and uh, sometimes we just need the fellowship and encouragement of other men. So, uh, Angelo, I want to just uh, pray for you, for your health, for your uh, lifting up. Lord God, without being able to come to church, it, it makes it very difficult. And uh, the seniors that uh, are at home have a difficult time. And uh, I know I even have a difficult time sometimes. I, I go out just to go on my walks and I say hi to people, keeping my distance. Uh, so if we could just bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you now for the men in our church, for the men in the city, for the men throughout the country that need you. The verse that was uh, talked about was having a pure heart, following Jesus, doing what Jesus would want us to do. Lord God, I'm sure that Jesus wants us to visit people, help people in whatever way we can. And we do that with the soups. We do that, Lord God, with encouraging words. And we want to bring Angelo before you, Lord God. Thank you for Angelo. Uh, it's been nice getting to know him over the years, and uh, I just pray for his health to uh, stay good and that uh, he's encouraged by those around him and his church family. Lord, I also want to pray for uh, Alex as well. He's also one of the people that uh, comes into the, the Zoom men's Bible study Thursday evenings at 7. Alex, we love you and we're so thankful for you. And we ask for the Holy Spirit of the living God just to lift you up and encourage you in your walk. Lord, there's many other men as well that uh, we'd like to bring before you. Some don't like their names being mentioned, but Lord God, thank you that uh, we could talk on the phone, that we could uh, go out and have a, a distant coffee together or maybe even a cup of tea. Yes, Lord, thank you for all these men I've got to know over the years. And I just pray for your Holy Spirit to uh, just bless them in incredible ways. Each one has their own talents and abilities and gifts. And Lord God, that's what it's all about, to use what we have to build up the body of Christ. So thank you, Lord, for these men and for their, their wives and girlfriends and, and all the others that they uh, associate with. Lord God, thank you for the family that we have here. We ask for your blessing on all of this, Lord, in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, Bob and Margo. And folks, you can see that it's always possible to make a way to have prayer with someone. You may be able to visit them or you may be able to pick up the phone and call them. Maybe you need prayer. And Please, if you would like someone to pray for you, give us a call. Thank you for joining us tonight. May God bless you. <laughs>